So what I'm telling you here is that by December 18th, this chart will either have broken out to the upside or to the downside. Greetings, everyone. We have the honor of hosting Gareth Soloway, a distinguished guest who delves into historical data, current credit card information, spending trends, and interest rates to make insightful predictions about the stock market. As a master trader and analyst, Soloway also covers topics such as the US dollar, chart pivot points, and crucial support and resistance levels in Bitcoin. His analysis highlights an imminent potential in Bitcoin that many analysts and retail traders seem to overlook as Soloway meticulously dissects the prevailing market. Subscribe now, hit that bell icon, and embark on an enriching journey toward financial success. Let's unlock the potential of these markets together and pave the way for a brighter financial future. Welcome aboard. Bitcoin BTC $37,032 starts a new week keeping traders guessing near its highest levels in 18 months. What's next? BTC price action has held higher after spiking above $38,000 last week, but since then, a testing micro range has left bulls and bears locked in battle. Whether a deeper retracement will come or a trip to $40,000 will leave naysayers behind is now the key short-term question for market participants. We know that the S&P 500 continues to be into some short-term resistance. All right, the S&P up of almost 9% for the month of November. It is amongst the biggest gains in November we have seen historically. You can see, again, the vertical move we've seen directly up into the short-term trend line of resistance. If I quickly zoom in on this, you guys can see again, there's your low pivot, you moved up to here. Now, just a couple key technical data points. So year over year sales for Black Friday were up. Yes, they were. So again, the consumer is still spending, even though credit card debt is a trillion plus. So again, the consumer continues to put more and more debt on their shoulders. And this is the key data point that I saw that made me say, whoa. So the key is this. So buy now, pay later. You know what percentage that was up from last year? by almost 50%. So there's been a 50% increase in buy now, pay later from last Black Friday to this Black Friday. Does that tell you about a consumer that is slightly getting strapped? And the answer is yes, it does. All right, so that right there tells me that we're probably still looking at a recession in 2024. The question now is, is it first quarter or is it second quarter of 2024? And by the way, we're gonna look at gold in just a little bit, gold breaking up, silver breaking out, continuing its breakout. Bitcoin, we'll look at that in just a few minutes. Okay, so again, we have the chart here of the S&P 500. Probability-wise, we know that the continued probability is that you still have some sort of check back. Now, how big of a check back? That's up in the air. My general consensus would be back to this gap fill here, around 440 on the SPY. Now again, remember, this is a probability game, so always keep that in mind, is that this downside move is probably favored with about a 70% chance. It still leaves a 30% chance that into your end, they could jack this market up with no pullbacks, uh, continuing it higher towards those all-time highs. All right, so again, all about probabilities. That's what charts are doing for you. They're not giving you solidified, no-brainer, 100%. They're giving you probabilities. If we look quickly at the NASDAQ 100, I love the doji we got last Wednesday, right? Thursday markets were closed. We got a pause, small pullback day right into this level here on the NASDAQ 100. Much the same as the spiders, the trend line again, if we look at this and zoom out on the chart and we go back a decent way here, we can see again from this point of intrigue right here, that pivot high connected to this pivot high, we have this move right here. And again, I believe the NASDAQ's up almost 15% in the month of November. So again, a meteoric move up, 
A question again, does it have enough to continue up? And the answer is it may, but probabilities, again, going back to old trusty probabilities, what does it tell us? There's a pivot right in here. There's a gap fill right here. Probabilities should be a check back. And then the market decides whether it wants to push through or does it want to continue to the downside? Looking at the US 10-year yield, which obviously is unbelievably important. And I'm curious to see, Jerome Powell talks on Friday. So there's a speech from Jerome Powell on Friday. I'm curious if the Black Friday strength in sales, does that push him in either direction? If we look at the 10-year yield, I had some key trend lines, right? Trend line from here across this upsloping trend line. Notice how the 10-year yield fell down and kind of is kissing this area and beginning to kind of move off of it. Now, the question I have is, do we see more of a bear flag where it goes like this and eventually rolls, or does it start to curve up? I would in general think this is the more likely scenario based on how far we've come on interest rates. I still think we probably have to come down a little bit more. Now, the bigger question will be is, does that create a catalyst for pushing the markets up higher or does it all of a sudden become a panic scenario where people say, oh my goodness, the economy's starting to fall apart, and do we then see rates going down with the stock market? Remember, historically, number one, it's only when the yield curve uninverts, which by the way hasn't happened, that recessions come, historically speaking, and also looking at the data, we also know that the markets tend to sell off. And this is something a lot of people don't know. The stock market tends to sell off once the Fed starts cutting rates. And the reason you might say, well, I mean, what the heck? Why, why is it that the, when the Fed cuts rates, the markets sell off? Don't the markets love free money or low, cheap money? And the answer is this. If the Fed is being pushed to cut rates, we know that there's something majorly wrong in the economy. And there's going to be this fear, just like on the upside that the Fed was behind the curve, the, the Fed may be looked at as being behind the curve on cutting. Oh my God, they're not doing enough quickly enough. They're not cutting rates enough to stimulate the economy. They're late. They're kind of, you know, it's that whole uh, inflation is transitory. They call it wrong. And the panic and fear comes in. Dollar wise, take a look. I've been bearish on the dollar. I continue to be bearish on the dollar. Um, yeah, you have some some supports here, right? We've broken this key level, so we know that that technical level came down. Notice how it came down here and then did a classic retrace to the scene of the crime and then continued on. If I zoom in a little bit here, real quick, just to show you. So here was the consolidation, the breakdown, the retrace to the scene of the crime, and then the continuation there. And I continue to think the dollar probably uh, heads a little bit lower. Your short-term target is going to remain right at this trend line. This trend line is a major trend line. If I zoom out, I'll show you why it's a major trend line, because look at how far back it goes. And for those of you that are wondering what makes a major or a minor trend line, the answer is pretty simple. It's that you know very short-term connections on trend on pivot points on the chart are going to give you more minor technical levels. When you go back on the dollar chart to 2021 and you have this pivot low and you connect it to the secondary most dramatic pivot low, what do you think that's going to do? That's going to create more of a major technical uh, level. So if the dollar does fall into this, you should get some sort of bigger, longer, sustainable bounce versus a shorter term trend line. But when you break and confirm, it now becomes resistance. Well, look at that right there, right? So down here, one, two. So you're at a point where one, two, three hits of this trend line, you're getting to a point where the chart is weakening that trend line. So again, it may still check back a little bit. That's my expectation. But if it hits again, it wouldn't surprise me if Amazon moves higher in the near term. Short term resistance is going to be somewhere in here, kind of right around that 160, 170 level. But again, a gold nugget of education right there as well in terms of hitting a trend line. When does it weaken? It's usually the fourth or fifth time that once it hits four or five times on a technical level, the probabilities start to exponentially increase that it's going to bust through. Uh, looking at Shopify, Shopify has had a very impressive rally in the near term. Notice how I'm going over some of the retail stocks here to kind of talk to you guys about the Black Friday stuff. Um, but nonetheless, Shopify, nice move here. If we look at where this could head, 
um, there is a gap fill around $89. So this would be your best case scenario in my opinion. There's a level right here. And if we draw that trend line right across, that would be your best case scenario. Now, would I buy Shopify here? Heck no. Why not? If it could go to 89, why not? Well, number one, the stock's already gone up from $40 to $70 in a straight line. So think about the alpha missed on that move already. Not only that, but if it just checks back, like, you know, you got 19 bucks left, but let, let's just say this does a 50% FIB retrace, right? You bring it down to 55, you're basically just a 50% FIB retrace away from evening out risk reward. And again, risk reward in that situation doesn't make sense. Now, if this were to pull back, and I'll show you guys this, right? So on Shopify, where might I be tempted to buy? I'll show you guys right now here. If we did a retrace, let's say somewhere in the vicinity of this area, right? So again, looking at this area here, and there's a gap fill right here. So you're looking at 65 to $62. Now you're talking. Now at least you've got a reasonable retrace, right? Through this area, or through here, that level there plus the gap fill here, somewhere in this vicinity starts to make more sense as a technical opportunity. All right, so, all right, on to Bitcoin we go. Bitcoin is starting to come down just a little bit, guys. If I zoom in on the chart, we continue to be stuck in this wedge pattern. I think it's amazing to watch a wedge pattern work its magic. And the reason I say that is because again, you know, it keeps looking like it's gonna break out and then the level gets rejected over and over again. We've now rejected it three times. Now, this is the beauty of the methodology, folks. The what 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 I refer to the winning trader series is that I want you guys to think about putting the pieces of the puzzle together. So we've now hit one, two, three times. Remember when I was talking about hitting a trend line, breaking down the door. So we've only hit three times. So did you really expect it to break out after three hits? And the answer should be no. Probabilities tell us that you have to hit it four or five times to get a breakout. Same thing on the downside. This is kind of just considered one long one, but two and three. So you've now essentially hit three on the top, three on the bottom, which tells us that it's very possible one of the next hits, either the one of the next, whether the next one or the next one after that, four or five, creates either the breakout or the break down. And again, I think this is so cool to be able to put the pieces of the puzzle together from the last example I showed you over on the other side with this, because you can see how it's working its magic again and again and again. It's freaking cool, guys, freaking cool. All right, anyways. So that's where we are at this point. One thing I want to point out to you, if we pull this chart back, there's a point where the wedge pattern, it's right over here, it's December 18th. So what I'm telling you here is that by December 18th, this chart will either have broken out to the upside or to the downside. That's it, because these lines are meeting over here, right here, and it will force price out one way or the other. Now, probably the breakout or breakdown happens ahead of that, but again, I wanted us to just be aware of that. Subscribe, like, and share. Let's make this journey to financial empowerment unforgettable.